Dear friends, today we are going to discuss about the continental influences on Japanese culture during ancient and medieval ages. As we know, with the creation of the Japanese islands millions of years ago, the people had started moving into these islands from different directions. Chunguzik people, whom we know also as the Ainu people, moved into northern part of Japan via Hokkaido and they occupied the northern parts of Japan. From the continental side, China and Korea, Mongols entered the Japanese islands. From the Southeast Asian countries also, people belonging to the Malayan race, they entered Japan via Formosa, Formosa and Ryukyu Islands. These people brought their own culture along with them. The Japanese civilization during the Paleolithic age was not so developed. Up till the Jomon period, that is up till 3rd century BC or so, Japan was passing through a hunting, hunting stage. Japanese people were able to uh, make only pottery with the help of ropes and it came to be known as Jomon period because of the design of the pottery of that time. Not much is known about this hunting age. People were living in pits and agricultural activities also had not developed. Then comes the Yayoi period. During the 3rd century BC and thereafter, continuing up to the 3rd century AD, there were political turmoils in China. Because of the imperialistic wars in the country, a large number of Chinese people moved into the Japanese islands via Korea. They brought their Chinese culture to Japan. First, the Chinese culture reached Korea and then with certain modifications over there, it reached Japan. Here starts another age on in the history of Japanese civilization, which we know as Yayoi culture. During Yayoi culture, the Japanese people primarily learned a major part of the Chinese civilization, namely the script, which was Chinese and it came to be introduced in Japan. Then certain social philosophies, Confucianism and Taoism also came to be introduced over here. During the 6th century, slightly after the Yayoi period, Buddhism also came to be introduced from partly Korea and also partly from China. When we talk about the typical Chinese influences over here during Yayoi period, here we talk about the script which came to be introduced in Japan. The Japanese people were not aware that the, whatever they spoke about, it could also be put into writing. With the help of Chinese, people, they came to know that they could possibly maintain their official records. For this purpose, the Chinese scribes were appointed by the Japanese government to maintain their official records. But the difficulty was that Chinese was not known to the Japanese people. So Japanese uh, bureaucrats, they developed Japanese pronunciations of the Chinese script. Chinese kanji and they started using the Chinese kanjis with Japanese pronunciation. This is how the bureaucrats were able to use the kanjis. But the difficulty was a major part of the population, particularly the women folk, 
they could not know, could not understand, could not study kanji because they had other responsibilities of householders. So, for them, a different script was developed by Kokai, also known as Kobodaishi, which was Hiragana script. Hiragana script was simple and it helped the common people to read and write conveniently. This gave a major incentive to learning process in Japan. And the result was there was a lot of development in the field of literature. We have major works by Lady Murasaki no Shikibu, who wrote Genji Monogatari, then Sei Shonagon, who wrote uh, Magurana Soshi, that is a pillow book. Then Manushu was also written in Hiragana script. This developed lot of literary taste among the Japanese people. This is how Chinese script influenced the Japanese people, their life and culture to a great extent. Continental philosophies entered Japan during or along with the migration of the Chinese people. These philosophies were Confucianism and Taoism. When exactly they influenced the minds of the Japanese people, it is difficult to say. But it was certainly during the 3rd century and 4th century onwards. Confucianism, a philosophy which, philosophy which developed in China around 6th century BC, it talked about relationships in the country, in the family, the relationship between the king and the subject, father and the hus father and the child, husband and wife, and relationship among the friends. Objective of the philosophy was to establish harmony in the society. Since this suited the bureaucracy at that time. They also wanted to establish harmony in the society, peace and order. So, it was well accepted by the Japanese society. This philosophy developed a feeling of obedience, submission, sense of discipline, commitment in the society. And this is what the bureaucracy or the government needed. It also in a way supported the authority of the emperor. Along with Confucianism came Taoism. Taoism primar primarily talked about the nature, various aspects of nature. Taoism suggested there was one basic principle in the nature controlling it. Then it talked about two different poles, opposite poles, two extremes, that is the male and the female, positive and negative, likewise heat and cold, fire and water. It talked about nature having two different extremes. Then it talked about another thing three different aspects of nature, three different manifestations of nature. One, sky, second, earth, and third, the man. That is, nature was manifesting itself the, through these three objects. Fourth, there were four different directions. Fifth, there were five major elements in nature, water, fire, wood, metal and earth. Sixth, there were six major relationships, the king and the subject, father and the child, husband and wife. Taoism said that these were the basic elements of nature and the society and they needed 
to be properly adjusted, managed and controlled. Only then uh, a, 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 a society with law and order could be maintained and retained. It talked about the concept of Li, concept of righteousness. Everybody should be taught what righteousness is and what is wrong. And this righteousness must be preserved. It talked about another concept of yin and yang, the basic concept in Taoism. Opposites. The, oppo the whole nature was divided into opposites and it was the responsibility of the government and the society to maintain a balance between these opposites. Third, major philosophical concept that entered Japan was Buddhism, may also be called a religion which originated in India and then via China and Korea it entered Japan during the 6th century AD. The ruler of kingdom of Pai Che in 552 sent a delegation of Buddhist monks with certain Buddhist scriptures to Japan, introducing Buddhism as a great philosophy which could help the people in gaining happiness, prosperity and freedom from all evils of the all problems of human life, gave the suggested the path of simplicity in life, truthfulness, non-violence and then doing good deeds towards others. First it was a path of four principles then to be divided again into eight paths. Ast Margi uh, philosophy. Buddhism came to be introduced during Asuka period and Shotoku Taishi helped the spread of Buddhism in Japan. Shotoku Taishi was a great scholar. He studied Confucianism and Taoism, Shinto religion too and he spread, he, uh, he supported the spread of Buddhism in Japan. Buddhism influenced the 17 Articles Constitution which was the brainchild of Shotoku Taishi and introduced in Japan in 604 AD. Shotoku Taishi suggested that all the provinces in Japan must have at least one Buddhist temple and this is how Buddhist, Buddhism gained impetus in Japan. During Nara period, a few sects came into existence, six in all, but three of them disappeared soon. Kegon, Hoso and Ritsu. We will not go into the details of it, which can be studied separately. But then, Buddhism continued finding popularity in Japan. During Heian period, uh, saints like Saicho and Kokai, they went to Japan, studied over there. Saicho established uh, Tendai sect and Kokai established Shingon sect. Likewise, Saito established a monastery in Mount Hiei, Hiei San, and Kokai also established a monastery, Shingon sect monastery on Mount Koya or Koyasan. Buddhism was able to attract the Japanese people, though in the beginning it had the opposition from certain sects like Nakatomi and Imbe family, but then later this opposition was uh, finished by the Soga clan and Buddhism continued thereafter spreading without much problems. During Kamakura period, Nichiren and uh, other two saints, Eisai and Dogen, they also spread such, uh, they, they also spread Buddhism. Eisai developed Soto sect. Eisai established Soto sect and uh, Dogen uh, established Rinzai sect. 
these two saints suggested that it was necessary that one should realize the truth through meditation. And they suggested the concept of Zen. Zen originally was a Hindu word dhyana, which first reached to China and it became Chan over there. And when it was introduced in Japan, it became Zen. These saints suggested one should sit in meditation and then think about the God. Then only one can realize the God, the ultimate uh, power of Lord Buddha. They suggested the method of Za Zen, that is sitting uh, in a certain posture, like yoga po po uh, posture of India, and then meditate. Another was concept was koan, that is, one should try to meditate in the sense one should think about certain issue. Koan means a certain question. The teachers of Buddhism used to give a certain question, certain problem to the student and ask him to think about it and find the solution. This is how Buddhism continued developing during Kamakura period. Buddhism continued its influence on the Japanese society thereafter also, but during later part when Tokugawa period started uh, under Ieyasu Tokugawa, Buddhism could not maintain its popularity because during Tokugawa rule, Shinto was given more impetus. However, Buddhism has continued to be an important part of Japanese social life up till today. Buddhism, in fact, touched the hearts of the people. It was a religion which promised all kind of happiness and prosperity and relief from problems of human life. The concept of Amida Buddhism, as it was suggested by Honen Shinran, it said that Lord Buddha was very kind and he would try to solve the problems of every living being. And all the people, because they were suffering from one problem or the other in their lives, they started believing in Buddhism. And when Zen philosophy was suggested to them, that it was possible for them to realize the power, the truth about Lord Buddha, they devoted themselves towards Zen Buddhism also. Zen as a philosophy influenced all aspects of Japanese life. Zen primarily concentrated on meditation. In other words, concentration on a certain point, on a certain issue. And as everybody knows, nobody can uh, find skillness, skill in any profession without con uh, concentration. This Zen philosophy influenced various arts in Japan, like the Ikebana, tea ceremony, martial arts, no play, calligraphy, and other aspects of life also. Whatever the art one may take, one has to concentrate in order to gain skill in it. Moments in the no play, managing the flowers in Ikebana, serving tea, or even uh, developing rock gardens, they need concentration. In martial arts, when a, when a soldier is fighting in the battlefield, he has to fully concentrate on his war efforts, how he is to attack the enemy and how he has to defend himself from enemy. All concentration is needed in the battlefield without thinking of his family members. This is how Zen philosophy influenced every aspect of Japanese life and it has continued influencing the Japanese society even up till today.
Uh, till now, we were discussing about the uh, introduction of continental philosophies. And the uh, religion of Buddhism. A question arises, what was the Japanese native religion at that time? What were the religious feelings of the Japanese people? Japanese people realized that uh, they had their own philosophical beliefs. Before Buddhism entered Japan, or even Confucianism and uh, Taoism uh, found their roots in Japan, Japanese believed in animism. They had a feeling that there was a life in every aspect, in every object of nature. The trees, the forests, the mountains, they had a life in them themselves. A kind of spirit was there. And the Japanese people also had a feeling that they had their ancestral gods. And it was from the goddess Amaterasu, sun goddess, that they had all descended. These were strong feelings in the minds of the Japanese people. And with these feelings, the Japanese people started giving a shape to their, you may say, philosophical or religious or social beliefs. And a collection of these beliefs came to be known as Shinto, that is the way of gods. After the development of Shinto as a social belief or as a native religion, Japanese started feeling whether they should have faith in Shinto or Buddhism. It was a big question for them. Buddhism assured them that Lord Buddha would give them salvation, also freedom from worldly miseries, poverty and disease. Shinto does not or did not promise something like this. And they wanted to retain their faith in both because Buddhism attacked it in its own way and Shinto was their own native relief. So a compromise developed and the best aspects of both the religions were combined into a new religion that is Ryobu Shinto that is dual Shinto. But this concept of Ryobu Shinto or dual Shinto did not continue for a long time. And this concept declined automatically. In brief, the concept of Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism continued in the Japanese life influencing their life and they are influencing their life even today. The next major impact on the Japanese society was in the field of economy. With the arrival of the Chinese migrants during the Ayoi period, from the 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD, the concept of agricultural agriculture was introduced in Japan. Up till now, the Japanese people were not able to use bronze or iron implements in agriculture. And hereafter, with the introduction of iron and bronze culture from China, the Japanese people were able to use these implements effectively. The Paddy field culture or rice field culture also was introduced from northern China, first into Korea and then from Korea it came to be introduced in Japan. This introduction of rice field 
culture significantly changed the lifestyle of the Japanese people. The people earlier, they used to live in pits or caves. Hereafter, after the coming of the Chinese people, Chinese migrants, they started making their huts, cutting the woods in jungles. They developed rice fields. Using these woods, they made their huts on the ground. They used planks and posts and theft, uh, thatched roofs. And thus, a new lifestyle of living in huts started in Japan. The introduction of uh, iron also had a significant impact on the warfare style. Earlier, the Japanese people used arrows and bows in the war, but now they started using swords, spears, and halberds. It was with the help of particularly these metals that the, when uh, the people from southern Japan, they started moving into the northern part of Honshu, these things were used by these people effectively and they were able to subdue their rivals in various parts of Honshu Island. Earlier, the Japanese people did not have the concept of keeping pets. But hereafter, the Japanese people started keeping the pets also. The system of loom, making clothes with the help of loom, looms, also started during this period. The Chinese system of government influenced the Japanese administrative reforms also. Taika reforms during uh, Asuka period and Taiho courts during Nara period, they were developed under the influence of Chinese administrative system. Taxation system, land survey, and ranks in the army or in the bureaucracy. They came to be introduced from China. Thus we see there was hardly any aspect of Germany society, administration, economy, or the political system, which remained uninfluenced by the continental culture. To put it briefly, the continental influences they gave to the Chinese people a script, which later resulted in the development of Hiragana and Katakana script. They gave them philosophies like Confucianism, Taoism, and religion like Buddhism. They gave them development in the field of economy, and they gave them development in the field of administration also. These reforms, which were carried out from time to time, continued influencing the Japanese society up till the age of modernization in Japan. As discussed earlier, the Japanese people had been learning from the continental culture almost from the beginning of Yayu period. Towards the middle of Heian period, they felt they had learned almost every aspect of Chinese and Korean society. And there was no further need to visit China. In fact, the visits to China were quite arduous and risky. Also, the fortunes of the Tang family were de in decline. As a matter of fact, the fortunes of Tang dynasty were also in decline. There were political turmoils in China. The Japanese people no more 
no longer wanted to visit China as the visits were quite arduous, dangerous and risky. In fact, two political leaders, Ono no Takamura and Sugawara no Michizane, they even refused to take up the assignments about their visits to China. This uh, made it very clear that the people in general in Japan had lost their interest in the continental culture. They felt they should now feel independent and develop the Japanese way of life independently. Hereafter, the desire to learn more from the continent came to an end, though the visits of the monks, traders and scholars continued, but the desire to learn more from the continent came to an end with the end of the Heian period. Thank you.